In this lesson in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to continue our look at how to customize the templates in your slideshow designer. There are 13 of them total, and we're breaking them up into slides that operate in similar ways or customize in similar ways. We have a separate lesson on how to do a slideshow in a very simple way, and we hope you check that one out. So I've taken some still images, placed them on track number one. I'm going to highlight them and then click on my slideshow button above the timeline to get started. First template I'd like to look at modifying is the one called cell. We'll click on this. And when I click on the cell twice, it will go ahead and load it. Let's see what it looks like by hitting the play button in my preview window. I have a large panel here with one picture and then three to the right. And then in this section, I have a different look. We'll go ahead and play it again so you can see it. Then I have a single picture that opens up and another one on top of that and the third on top of that. So it varies this according to its own design and it's a bit random, so it doesn't all look the same. But let's see how we can customize this particular one. When I hit customize, it gives me a preview of all of the slides. Here I have one with three to the right, one with three to the right, one with none to the right, one in the center, and one to the right side. When I press the remix button, watch what happens. We'll go ahead and look at the options and change it slightly. Here I have one and three, one and three, one left, one center, and one right again. Let me try remix a third time and see if anything changes. This one, this time it did. I have one in the center, one in the center, one in the center, one plus three and one plus three. So it will vary it. The one thing you can do is you can control the number of photos on a particular slide. Right now it's set to 10 but because I have a short presentation. I'm not going to see that, but you can change it with the up and down arrow. And if you change the number, you have to hit remix if you want to see the difference. The other thing that you can do is you can take any of these slides and you can change uh, the, the center and the size. You can crop and reposition. You do this by clicking on the set focus area. It opens up this little movable window here. And I can take this one, for example, shrink it down, move it around. And uh, there I have that particular slide. I can move to the next one. If I want to make it more interesting, change the size, change the orientation, and there I go. And we can do this throughout the entire presentation. You can also take one of the smaller ones uh, when you have four or more on a page and click the resize there. Looks like I had it active anyway. And I can uh, shrink it down. And there I have a close-up of the folks. Here we'll do it. We'll get a close-up of the driver on his tractor. And so you can adjust that way. It's a nice little tool to use. You can also add photos. If you click here, it will go to your file system. And you can go to um, anywhere you want to. Let me take uh, this picture of this bookcase here. And I can actually take this and put this in by dragging and dropping. And there now I've replaced it. And the one that I replaced goes back into my unused box. I can go ahead and switch these all I want. Or I can take this one and put it on a different slide. I can put it over here and uh, uh, add another photo. I'll take this American flag, put this one over here. And so you can make infinite number of adjustments uh, when you do this. So you can adjust the size and, uh, and crop each of the images. You can also uh, decide which ones you want in and even add images that are not in your uh, media bin area. You can also control the number of potential maximum photos on a single slide. Nice feature. And it's uh, not a bad looking, uh, um, not a bad looking template to use. Okay, we'll cancel out of that one. And let me show you another one. 
Uh, we're going to take uh, the next one in the, the line here. And if I click on slideshow, and we're going to work on one called time lapse, the last one in the section. This uses a different kind of tools. If I go ahead and play it, it played really fast. Now, oftentimes you need to customize this because it doesn't make much sense using it all by itself. So we'll click on the customize button. In the designer pop-up window, we discover there's a duration for each image. Right now it's set to one frame. Okay, if I want 30 frames per second, I'll hit 30. And then it asks, do I want to skip images? Um, and uh, I'm not going to do that in this case. Let's just see what happens when I change that there. Now if I change it, every second I'll get a different image if it's 30 frames per second in my project. And so if you want maximum control of the time between slides, this is the one to use. You can't do it simply by making the slides longer in your uh, main window when you're working in the timeline because all the other settings override it except for this one. This is one where you can customize that. Let's see what happens when we do uh, skip. For each display image, skip how many images? If I say skip one, okay, we'll click on here. And basically, we can't tell what it did because it simply <laughs> did every other image. Um, so I, I don't know how I would use this tool very often, but I would like to use uh, the frame control one quite a bit because it, it seems effective. So if, if timing is very important to you uh, in a slideshow presentation, again, it's universal. It doesn't vary from slide to slide. That'd be a great feature, uh, but that's not in the current version of PowerDirector at this point in time. So those are two more of the kinds of templates that you can customize in your slideshow creator in PowerDirector. Thank you.